Good morning from a beautiful day in Portugal. We are sitting down uh, by the stream that runs along the bottom of the garden and we're going to try and talk a little bit about why we came to Portugal and what the process was. This will probably be over a few videos because there's so much to say. But um, first let me introduce ourselves. I'm David. I'm Jennifer. And uh, we've been married for 25 years now, uh, 26 years this year. Yep. So we're, we're an old married couple. I'm the old one. She's not so old. <laughs> uh, we, um, the reason why we came to Portugal seems to be a question a lot of people are asking. And it, there's not a definitive answer to that because our, our situation was that I retired from working a little bit early uh, at 60 and I was fed up with the job there was a lot of traveling and uh, our daughter was off hand so to speak she'd gone off to university in America so that meant that we were free to perhaps do something different so we decided we'd go and live in the Philippines which was where Jen's where from. from yeah Jen's home originally although she's lived longer in England than she ever did in the Philippines and uh, we lived there for two years and it was relatively inexpensive to live um, quite a, an easy lifestyle if you like but then along came Covid and we had to come back to the UK and then like everybody else during lockdown we were shut in and uh, at that stage we went out and bought a big old van and the two of us converted it into a motorhome. Um, me doing a lot of the manual stuff and Jen giving it all the, the fine touches that she's really good at. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, which is nothing to do with Portugal, but that's kind of a little bit of our background. We, at that time, we did a bit of van life. We toured and uh, Jen, you used to get a little bit anxious, didn't you, in the van when it came to sleeping and that sort of thing? Um, parking for me, knowing where, not knowing where to park, um, that is the hardest for me. Um, yeah, I do get anxious. Yeah, it's kind of glamorised a little bit on YouTube, van yeah. life, and it is an alternative lifestyle, but you've got to be quite gutsy at times to uh, pull up at night somewhere and park and uh, not, not be uh, uncertain about your surroundings. Um, so that led us to thinking along the lines of, we'll find somewhere more permanent, at least to park the bus. And so we started watching uh, YouTube videos. And we came across a lady called Paula, a Portuguese lady, that put out property videos for sale with an English guy, what was his name? Nick. Nick. So Nick and Paula. And we, of all the ones that were on there, and there are many bit of videos about Portugal, they came across as the most trustworthy. I don't know, I can't explain why, but I think it was things like Paula always said, we won't sell the property unless all the paperwork is in place. And coming from England, you hear horror stories about people losing their money and that type of thing. So we really wanted to look for someone who was trustworthy. Yes. And, and we felt that about her, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. So in more recent times, uh, Paula stopped making videos with Nick and started making videos about property sales with Marlin. Uh, Marlin is uh, a Swede that's married to uh, an English guy, but they live in Portugal. So mm -hmm. it's kind of really multicultural here. Mm -hmm. It really is. And uh, we were coming over here with the intention of... Just looking around, do the van life thing. Yeah, we were literally <laughs> going to drive from one area to another, seeing if we liked it, yeah. seeing what the prices were. Yeah, just to see what Portugal really is like, I mean, yeah. We'd been to Portugal before, uh, many years ago. We used to come here for Christmas, but we always went to the Algarve 
and the Algarve is um, quite an expensive place to buy because of the beautiful weather so like a lot of Brits we looked around the area of central Portugal and we booked a ferry to come across mm -hmm. um, we, we arrived at Santander in Spain and literally drove to Portugal not knowing our destination at all yeah. um, we had a vague idea about a town called Fondal because there's a guy on YouTube you may have come across that lives in Fondal who talks about property. He so, sells he, he, yeah, so he's got a website and that kind of thing. So, we loosely had him in mind. So, we headed for Fondal, which uh, was kind of our second day in Portugal. Uh, we drove into Fondal town and just looking for somewhere to park. And almost as soon as we got into the town, we saw a big P for parking, pulled into the car park. Jen got out the van, and <laughs> the next thing that happened was... Uh, I met, we met Dan, and he came out of his house, and he saw us, and he said, would you like some orange? <laughs> so here we are, second day in Portugal, and the guy was offering us oranges. So. We didn't know Dan, but he spoke very, very good English. It turned out that Dan had lived in England for 18 years. Um, and another amazing thing we found out, he was particularly interested to talk to us because his own wife was Filipino. Um, yeah. She's actually still in the Philippines at the moment uh, with his children, but he's come home to uh, take care of his elderly parents for a little while. What a fantastic guy to meet. He was, um, he took us under his wing, didn't he? Mm, yeah. Uh, he showed us around. Yeah. And he was particularly good at getting our feet on the ground because mm -hmm. our minds were flying, weren't they? Yeah. We'll do this, we'll go there, we've got to do that. And uh, he was kind of saying, well, this is the price guide uh, for your budget. And this is what I think's good and uh, I can point you in that direction and because he was such a genuine guy we stopped and listened to what he had to say and that was a, a guiding light right from sort of day one he, uh, he took us to marketplaces to castles to eateries do you remember that oh yeah the um, the restaurant the, the grilled restaurant it was lovely yeah, it was on a market day and all the market traders themselves, when they've packed up, they tend to go to this, it's more like a cafe really. It probably only seats, what, 35, 40 people? Mm -hmm. And there's always a queue outside the door. So you sort of, you're squashed in there a little bit. And then for, I don't know, seven or eight euros, you're fed, given drinks mm -hmm. until you've had enough. Yeah. Uh, desserts and the atmosphere is oh, it, it was an experience <laughs> you know it, there's a real eye-opener to us because it showed us that even the most uh, unpromising type venues can turn out to be fantastic in Portugal mm. and the Portuguese people wow they're they're so so friendly you've probably heard it said before but until you get here and experience mm -hmm. it that, that's when you really find out how friendly they really are yes we don't speak any portuguese jen's trying um, <laughs> one one word a day <laughs> one word a day is, is her target but it's probably better than i'm doing um, i'm just about got knife fork and spoon at the moment <laughs> which is a joke in itself if you ever find out uh, what knife fork and spoon are in portuguese we, uh, at that time, we were still on our phone watching uh, videos about Portugal and we came across Marlin, who was working with Paula, as I said before, and the two of them made a video on this property here where we're living. So um, it was just about in our budget and yeah. we decided, well, let's go and have a look. Yeah. This was virtually the same day or the day after that it, it had come online 
so we were probably the first ones to come and view. Yes. Now, again, Dan came with us because um, we we'd been together for a week by then. Uh, we parked our van outside his parents' property, and we used his facilities. We used his water. It was a fantastic park up, really. But he'd become a real friend in a very short time. It is incredible how it went. So he came with us, which was reassuring really, because we always wanted that second opinion of a Portuguese person, um, rather than just us two diving in feet first, which we do tend to do, especially me. And so we came here, and what was the first thing we saw or discovered? I don't know, my, my recollection of it is the, the moment that I arrived is like, oh, the number, it's like, oh, it's the <laughs> number 77. And then you walk in and it's... It, uh, it hang has, on, yeah. why is 77 relevant? I don't know, you can explain. I don't want to tell. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, 77 is relevant because that's the year that Jenny was born. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I thought you would have said that. But... <laughs> Tell the world. <laughs> well, you know. I, know. Well, I wish I was born in '77. <laughs> no, it, it has a good feeling as you walk in. It's, it, I don't know. I can't explain it, but it's, it's, it was just lovely. The other s slightly strange thing was that this particular company, Marlin and Paula, who are called, by the way, Casa Rual, if you want to look them up on YouTube. They, uh, they put a code number against each video that they make. And like with a lot of British registrations, if you change the numbers and letters around, you can spell your name. And the code number for this property was our family name, uh, if you altered yeah. it slightly. So, um, yeah, that was- That's another sign. That was another, uh, well. just another little thing. <laughs> just, yeah. But when we arrived here at the property, I could hear a guy two houses down calling his dog in English. So, ah, you know, your ears pick up to your own mm. language. So we walked over and it turned out his name was Martin and he'd lived in this uh, village here for 15 years. So he was uh, a good person to meet straight away. And then next door to us on the, on the right hand side was uh, another English couple, Dick and Barbara. And on that particular day, they were being visited by their friends. Leslie and Dan. No, Leslie and Dean. 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 Oh, sorry, <laughs> you <can> cut that. <laughs> yeah, no, don't cut it. <laughs> Dan and Dean are very close. Dean had loved the fact that he changed his name to Dan. Um, sorry. <laughs> so another English couple, a fantastic English couple at that. And so we straight away felt well there's a little bit of an expat community here that i don't know just it felt homely straight away they were all so friendly <laughs> and um, it the good thing about that is obviously the language side of things is that once we realized we wanted this property we started to have to think about well, where's the general store? Where's the supermarket? Yeah. Um, what are the other facilities? Where's the medical yeah. center? And to have people- Has been here longer than us Obviously. and knows you know, where the places are, can guide us to um, where to go. And they have done that as well. You know, Whatever questions we've had, and we've had many, um, some of them silly, um, they've always been in, able to point us in the right direction. They're, they're a bit vague in their direction sometimes, aren't they? They say, oh, it's down the road on the left. And we drive off merrily and we, what was it again? On the left, you know, and you're, you're halfway up a mountainside and you're thinking, this can't be it. <laughs> but somehow we always seem to find what we set out for. And the road systems here, what, what's your opinion of those? Oh, it's fantastic. You, you might see a couple road, but it always leads to like the main road. <laughs> it is <laughs> true. It's true. 
it, you think you're going down the dirt track. Sometimes sat nav will take you down the dirt track and you think it can't possibly lead to anywhere. You get to the end of the dirt track and, and it comes out onto a, mm -hmm. a highway. And you think, wow, fantastic. You never seem to be able to mm. really get lost, do you? Yeah. You go off the beaten track, but you don't get lost. So <clears throat> we've obviously driven, as you've probably seen in previous videos, to some of the bigger towns in this, this area. And uh, we've been out to buy supplies and we've already got our favorite supermarket and yeah. One in particular where Jen tries very hard with the butcher to speak some Portuguese. <laughs> and of course, he likes the look of her, I think. And we get some of the choicest cups. Uh, yeah, the her. best one. Hidden. He always brings yeah. it out when I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I think he appreciates that the fact that she's trying yeah with, with the numbers <laughs> and and you know the descriptions of i think he likes it when i say it wrong <laughs> yeah i think really he's making fun of me but i don't care we don't care because uh, <laughs> everyone benefits oh he made end. me feel sorry for me <laughs> it's true yeah um so i don't know how long we've been talking for um uh, perhaps we all... <laughs> we're, we're lost oh, we lost, lost that thread <laughs> we're like <laughs> Yeah. Where, where are we here? We're going through this telling the neighbor's story. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are, we've already got so many stories to tell of, of the time we've been here that uh, we could probably fill another video. So I, I think we should cut it here and uh, talk, yeah. talk some more in, in a few weeks' time, perhaps. <laughs> so bye for now. <laughs> <We're> lost. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.